Good evening and welcome to Weekly Essentials. Um, so this week, um, we're going to talk about the sacral chakra. And by the way, my name is Tashan, or you could call me Tash. Um, so we're going to talk about the sacral chakra. I'm going to give like a minute to see if anyone arrives. Otherwise, I'll just be talking to the camera. Um, yeah, and then you guys could listen later. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Someone's going to listen. Um, so last week we talked about the root chakra, which I'm highly interested in only because I feel like that resonated with me a lot in, in some ways. Um, there are a lot of things in the root chakra that resonated, resonated with me. Um, so that's definitely something that I'm going to put some effort on and maybe I'll video some of the stuff like tonight I was thinking well it's a super moon um so I know you're supposed to charge your crystals um I don't know maybe I don't know I'm not like totally up on that stuff really I'm just like fly by night <laughs> on half my stuff so I'm just like really getting into the essential oils because before you know I'll say this like every week um I use them mainly for cleaning so that's my primary purpose in using them. Um, not like this stuff is new to me, but it's, you know, it's more or less like I'm not used to using them otherwise. Um, maybe I'll add them here and there in some of my products, but, you know, I'm still new to kind of like using them. And then knowing that, you know, like even the more I get to learn about the oils, the more you kind of realize that, well, you know, they're kind of sacred in a way. Because, you know, we're cutting down plants and trees um, in order to get these oils. So, you know, that you have to take some consideration into as well. Because then, you know, we could damage the environment, the ecosystem um, with excessive use of the oils. Um, so with that, so weekly essentials, um, we're talking about oils for the sacral chakra, which is the second chakra. Um, once again, my name is Tosh. Make sure you tune in. I'm going to try to be live every Monday at 10 p.m. on Instagram.com slash aromatherapy cleaning. So the sacral chakra is the chakra that a lot of people associate with sex. Um, some people call it the sex chakra, the creation chakra, and the social chakra. But really... Um, it really governs our creativity. So uh, let's see. The sacral chakra is located below your navel, kind of like in your belly, lower belly area, close to your genitals. Um, it is considered like your, your center, um, your center for passion and pleasure. Um, and this is used for, you know, creativity and for, you know, sexuality. Of course, also, you know, because it's in that area, it also governs our reproductive systems, um, sexuality, emotions, and our sense of adventure and relationships. Um, let's see. The symbol for the sacral chakra is the crescent moon. Uh, the color is orange and it's uh, associated with feminine energy. Okay, and let's see. The element for the sacral chakra is water. Uh, let's see, and the mantra is I feel. So when you say I feel, um, when, once I heard that, I was like, I feel, you know, it's like water, which is, yeah, it's associated, the element is water. So I was like watching a video and it was saying, I think it was Peru, but don't quote me on that. It was saying, no, I was actually reading something. It was saying that the sacral chakra, the earth also has a chakra system. And um, let me see if I can look it up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So the sacral chakra, let's see, the earth chakra system. Let me see if I can find the location. It was saying, I gotta do that because my phone is in. One of my thing. So I was saying it was somewhere. I think it's around 
Okay, it says the sacred lies at Lake Titicaca, um, which is in the middle of Peru. Yes, I was right. It's Peru. Not that um, Peru, Peruvian, Bolivian border. Okay, so it's saying it was a lake. It's like the area is a lake um, and it's considered to be sacred to the people that's in that region. Um, so, you know, it's associated water and then, of course, the location of it on Earth is also associated, I mean, not associated, it's directly located on water. So let me try to go back to my slide thingy here. So, which I thought that was interesting, but also, I mean, this region, right, below your stomach, I would guess that's also like a very kind of watery area. I'm not, you know, sure about the body and... I'm still learning a lot of things in life, okay? Um, so I'm not sure about, you know, that area, but I, I'm guessing also it's, you know, like a kind of watery type area. So the key characteristics of the sacral chakra is emotional connection, pleasure, passion, creativity, fluidity, um, giving and receiving love, and co-creation. Um, procreation, endurance, self-confidence, um, sensuality and sexuality so the signs that you're balanced um, so actually let's go back so let's see okay so the signs of balance so when you're balanced with your sacral chakra you're smooth you have smooth creative flow you have healthy sexual desires you have a positive outlook you're feeling energized and confident having um, creative energy uh, your sound emotional, you have sound emotional intelligence, you're mindful, healthy expression of sexuality, and sensual pleasure. So does that resonate with you? Or you're like, eh, I don't know about any of that. I'm not mindful. I'm not healthy. Like some of this, I can't, none of this kind of like, you know, I think I read some of the stuff like, oh, does that relate to me? Um, this is the same thing with the root chakra. Okay, does that relate to me? Um, that definitely related to me a lot of those things resonated so you know if you're looking to see okay what i mean like i don't want to say like we're always looking to see what's wrong with us um but you know like the reason why i am going over this type of stuff is because one it's associated with the oils and two i think you know like you have to get your mental in order in order for your kind of outward to kind of be in order of course like some people are the opposite I am definitely like my house is in chaos when I'm in chaos mentally so when I'm mentally in order my environment is in also in order so I know a lot of people struggle with that so this is you know one of the reasons why I'm going over that but then also you know right now especially you know we're kind of like going you know in the I'm hoping um how do you say post COVID? So I am hoping that um not hoping, but I am thinking, you know, like a lot of us went through a lot of stuff, especially, you know, being at home all the time and all this other stuff, maybe having to deal with the cope with a lot of things that we weren't really prepared to deal with because this just happened, you know, like one day we were fine, and the next day it was just like, whoa, what happened there, you know? Um, so, I know a lot of people are dealing with stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, you know, when we, for me personally, I can't say this is like, I can't say it's a blessing per se, and I don't even like using that word. But I can't say that it was something negative for me, I guess, definitely being in the house all the time. And I used to go, I, to be honest, like now I don't really, because last year I was definitely struggling um, emotionally. So I definitely went out for a walk at least once or twice a week and doing things like that. Now it's like, I hardly go out for a walk. But then also I do leave my house at least twice a week, um, which I think, you know, it's kind of weird. But then I've always been like that. If I wasn't working, more than likely I'll be home and I'll stay home the whole day. Um, I'm kind of like a little bit of a hermit. I don't know why, but I am. So, you know, just discussing these type of things, you know, you kind of like try to come into the realization 
okay, this is what's wrong with me, or, you know, maybe this is the area I need to focus on so I could become, you know, healthier. Then the other thing I was listening to, um, I don't remember the recall the real name, but I'm going to listen to it again. It was live as it was a live zoom meeting. And, um, some guy touched on certain things like this fight or flight instincts, um, that we have. And he was saying, you know, like, when we don't have control over our lives, um, it's like we go back into that mode fight or flight and then we get, you know, these anxieties. Um, so he touched on like one thing in particular, which was about control. And then I was like, wow, that like, you know, that really resonated with me because, you know, when I'm anxious and stuff, the things that I do to kind of like try to get back in balance and get in control of my life, you know, it's weird. <laughs> I was just like, oh that makes sense you know it's like reading the root chakra stuff it's like oh that makes sense that you know that resonates with me a lot um so if any of this resonates with you then you know you know some of the things that you kind of like need to work on so when you're imbalanced or underactive on your sacral chakra you have a fear of pleasure lack of creativity feeling fatigue, lack of desire, not authentic to yourself, you're insecure, you detach. And the insecurity and detachment part, like those two resonate with me um, in a way. But that's, you know, and that makes sense, right? Because like, if you think about relationships and stuff, like you start feeling insecure, maybe when your, your partner is doing certain things, um, which, you know, it's related to relationship, the sacral chakra and passion. So it's like when your partner is not passionate about you or, you know, um, doing things that you don't like, then your insecurity come. And then some people either get in attached or some people detached. And I am one that I, I could be both. Um, you know, I could be obsessive and then I could be like, oh, whatever, um, depending on how I feel. Um, sign of overactive sacral chakra. So, you know, if any of this resonate with you, you know, leave a comment and let me know also, cause I want to, you know, know, you know, if any of this is useful to anyone or if any of this, you know, anyone finds this information useful. So signs that you're over, you have an overactive sacral chakra. So you have emotional overreactions that resonates with me for real. Uh, dramatic, aggressive, anxiety, excessive emotional attachment, codependent, addictive personality. So definitely the dramatic um, emotional overreactions, those are definitely things that I indulge in, um, you know. So which, you know, like a lot of this stuff makes sense, right? Like if you think about yourself in a relationship, um, it's either, you know, you're underactive or overactive so I want to look more into you know like what makes you overactive and I guess like you know maybe it could be either it could probably feel anxiety on both levels but um it's all the way about you know you you react in a way you probably react in a insecure way um or you might react in a dramatic way I definitely react in a dramatic way because I get anxiety and once again you know that goes back to what the guy said the fight or flight so now you react so you know you're in a situation someone makes you feel a certain way and then you react you react aggressively or you react detached um or you become codependent you know and you get certain things there goes my me turn this down for so so let me know what do you think are you you know does any of this resonate with you as far as the sacral chakra um like i said a lot of these resonate with me the emotional overreaction being dramatic aggressive and you know i do get anxious and so with the anxiety you know, that fight or flight instincts kind of kick in. And then I become um, obsessive compulsive. So not good behavior. So, you know, ways to balance your sacral chakra. So you connect with water because it's associated with water, right? Creative play. So you try to, you know, what are the things that you like to do that are creative? Maybe you play an instrument. So you practice or for me, I like to draw. So I've been doing a, a little bit of drawing here and there. 
um, yoga practices for sacral chakra, meditation for sacral chakra, um, sacral chakra affirmations, um, which the, let's see now, the sacral chakra mantra is I feel. So you could say, I feel confident. I feel mindful. I feel healthy. You know, those are the things that I guess you could say to yourself. Um, to make you to get that energy um, but like the guy like you know that that zoom meeting that I listened to so he was saying you know like a lot of this stuff you have to you know um, how do you say you have to you know it's actions so you can sit down and you can say all these mantras but if you don't get up and do something then what's the point so let's see. So you balance it, you know, by doing these things. So the yoga, the creative play, the meditation, um, aromatherapy, um, which I'll go over the oils in a few minutes. And then, of course, with the crystals. So since the color of the sacral chakra is orange, so guess what? Orange crystals will be good. But you could also use quartz, which I don't know if it's on this list, but... That's what I have because we have the the sacral chakra meditation set, crystal quartz set um, available. So that we, um, I think we put the quartz in there for the sacral chakra. So all of this information is also on our blog um, at perfectladycleaning.com slash blog. Also, if you leave a comment... Um, each week we're going to choose someone as a winner so we're going to be giving away free essential oils to those that leave comments um, under our blog posts so essential oils for the sacral chakra lavender i love that i'm you know i'm always matching when that's talk about lavender <laughs> so lavender is a universal oil in a way um you could practically use, use it with all the the chakras i guess um yeah you can you could use it with all the chakras reason being is that lavender is soothing um so that's one of it's uh let me see Maybe I'm, skip. I'm not going to click over there. But lavender is pretty much, it's very calming. It's a very good oil uh, to use. Even like today, I'm using it um, a lot. And I was just like, whoa, like this is so good. It just makes you feel good. It just gives you like that, the smell of it alone just makes you just feel amazing. Uh, so lavender, Lang Lang, um, that one is stimulating and has a calming uh, effect on you. It's almost similar to the lavender. Uh, so some of the oils might be a little bit repetitive um, only because like, you know, when you're feeling anxious and you're feeling emotional, your body needs to calm down. Like, you know, it's like the guy said, you're going to this fight and or flight mode. So your anxiety is up. Everything is up. Or even for some people, they feel down. So the, the lavender or even the Lang Lang um, or the rose essential oil, those will bring your mood up. Um, but also they work in like this kind of like up and down way where it's like okay it's calming but also it could be energizing in a way because it's calming your anxiety but then lifting your spirit um so yeah so the rose is calm and nurturing the sweet orange i when i think about any citrus oil i think about lemon which i feel like lemon is like pizzazz you know like you think about you know lemonade is sweet and it's tangy um that's just what comes to my mind but the lemon pretty much frees up stagnant um, life energy and brings emotional ease. So like I said, it's like a lot of repeated stuff. It's like it's going to pretty much what is trying the oils are there for is to kind of like calm your emotions. Um, patchouli increases temperature and enhances your mood. And I do not know how to pronounce this oil. Let me see if my computer could pronounce it for me. Helichrysum, nice, okay. <laughs> um, that oil is calming. Uh, bergamot is almost the same thing. Uh, bergamot definitely, I, to be honest, I was, you know, like someone asked me, you know, which oils do you like to use the most? And, and they were like, do you like lemon? I was like, no, you know what? I prefer bergamot, even though bergamot is a little bit more expensive than the lemon essential oils. And I'm very conscious of, you know, using out my oils. I mean, I sell them, but I don't want to use them, waste my oils and stuff. But, you know, the bergamot is a little bit more expensive than 
uh, lemon, but I would rather use the bergamot. And she's like, yeah, because bergamot is an antidepressant. So I was like, oh, wow, like, you know, that makes sense why I like using it. It makes me feel good. Um, while the lemon is more, even though bergamot is a citrus oil, um, the lemon is more uplifting, more than calming. So uh, the bergamot invigorates your in, in, blah, 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 blah. Invigorates your senses and encourages the release of repressed emotion, uplifting and gently relaxing, releases stress and tension. So we have the sandalwood, um, which reunites the spirits with the senses. Its properties are calming, sedative, and antidepressant. So a lot of the oils, you're going to see a lot of repeat because, you know, like when you're, you're, we're talking about stuff. I mean, like if you don't have issues in life, then you're not going to be into this stuff, right? You're not, you're going to be, this is something that you bypass and go about your day instead of like looking into, okay, I have a little bit of issue here and there. I need to try to figure it out. So you're going to be looking, um, at things to, you know, to uplift your spirit. So a lot of the oils are going to be, you know, kind of antidepressive in a way. And also I think rose essential oils also, um, releases, um, emotions. Um, I love rose essential oils, especially, especially essential oil, especially when I'm feeling super emotional, um, especially in relationships and stuff like that, which makes sense because it's under the, where are we under? We're under the sacral chakra, which deals with relationships. So, and rose is one of the oils you could use, um. So I just didn't go over the, you know, my spiel about essential oils. So one, it's not FDA regulated, right? So I always try to say, you know, take precaution with using the oils. The oils are great uh, to use, but use them with purpose. Use them with intention. If you don't have no purpose or intention to use it, you're just using it and wasting it. Just like, I, you know, I stated before, you know, you wouldn't be here or listening to something about sacral chakra if there wasn't really a purpose for you unless you're just you know interested in the chakras then you listen but you know if you're listening a lot of times maybe you have issues going on and you're like okay let me you know let's try to figure this out let me try to figure that out but there's limited research that essential oils actually work right so all of this stuff How do you say all of this stuff, you know, we could, you know, we could, how do you say, how, what do they call it? The placebo. So it's all in your mind. But when you smell real good oils, you know that it's not just a placebo. It does affect your mood. It does affect you. But there's also precautions because if you're pregnant, if you have kids around that's especially under the age of seven, you want to, you know, take precaution in the essential oils you use because they might, their body might not be fully developed to take the strength of these oils because you have to understand that one drop of essential oil, one drop of, you know, my, my, um, my example would be one drop of uh, lemon essential oils is equal to 20 lemons. So imagine that you have squeezed 20 lemons and now the aroma of those 20 lemons is in the air or, you know, around kids or around your pets. So be very mindful, you know, of who you are using your oils around um, and research. Make sure you speak to your doctor, you know, and, and make sure that you are not taking medication that might interfere with the oils because that could also be, you know, something that could be dangerous to you. So take into consideration those things. So safety first when it comes to the essential oils. That's something that, you know, I'm very big on. And, you know, before I even started, I'm glad, you know, certain things have been ha happening, happening in the way that they have um, that, you know, like I'm understanding more. Because even before, you know, I'm all into this stuff I mean I was but then mainly on the cleaning side like so I'll get like a lot of oils that was antibacterial anti you know um, uh, antifungal and things like that anti you know like of course so a lot of them also antidepressant but that wasn't my primary function my primary function was to know that they were gonna be killing bacteria and killing 
fungus and killing, you know, things that I'm cleaning it with, um, cleaning with them. So that was my primary use of them. Um, but yeah, so you want to, you know, take precaution. Like I wouldn't, you know, even before, like if I was going to a customer's house, I would definitely make sure that, you know, they don't, they, a lot of times they, they won't be there anyways, but opening up the windows. If they have kids there, I wouldn't probably would not use peppermint unless they wanted me to, um, and other essential oils that, and then the oils that are a little bit, uh, more, how do you say that have more precaution on them? I don't, they're not really oils that I'll use because number one, they're probably more expensive. And number two, they probably don't have the, the, the components that I want, which is antibacterial. So, you know, a lot of the oils that I have are tea tree. Um, and I got some, a lot more oils the other day, but even those two have, uh, uh, anti, uh, bacterial and antifungal and things like that in them. So that's, you know, my primary function when it comes to that. So crystals that you could use, uh, with, uh, to balance your chakra or, you know, to ease you out or how, however you want to say carnelian, um, it has a healing and balancing effect. Citrine heightens self-discipline, attracts professional success and wealth. Orange calcite integrates the spiritual realm with the physical body, enhances creativity and is helpful when working with emotional issues, milky quartz, Calming down your feelings, moonstone, closely associated with cycles of the moon, fertility, and feminine reproductive area. Selenite, attributed to purity and peace. So those are the stones that you can use to balance your chakra. So how would you, you know, I have on the blog, um, a essential oil blend. But how would you use, you know, use the oil? So you could definitely make a blend uh, and then, you know, uh, put it in your roller bottle or clean with it. That's, you know, like you clean, hopefully you clean once a week or once a month, depending on, you know, your home. You could clean, make a blend and clean with it. Uh, you could, let's see, you could, you know, uh, make lotions. Can make a lot of different things um, but the easiest thing or even today I made a face scrub so you can make a blend and put it in your face scrub uh, to you know there's a lot of things that you could do like uh, with the oils once you you know make a blend or just use a single oil like sometimes I'll just use rose or lavender um, to calm you know to calm myself down mainly rose when I'm like feeling super emotional I'll I'll diffuse some rose oil so that's also another way to use it um, but the primary thing is to, you know, smell them because it's aromatherapy. Um, so aroma has to do with scent and using your, um, I forgot the technical name, but using that. So uh, we've come to the end. So let me know, like, does any of this resonate with you? Um, also, you can leave a comment on of course our Instagram or you can go to our blog like I said we are doing the 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 free giveaway when you make a comment on our blog post so go on our uh, page and make sure you leave a comment on there and you will be able to be entered into our um, our giveaway weekly so uh, let's see to me, this is very interesting. Like the root chakra was definitely resonating with me a lot. Uh, the, excuse me, the, um, sacral chakra, not quite as much. Definitely. I do feel imbalanced. Like if someone triggers me, I'll definitely, you know, feel, you know, like I said, the anxiety, the overreactions, the emotional overreactions, the drama, um, but then I also, a lot of that, I also attribute to my sign, which I'm a Leo. So I feel like, of course, I'm going to react dramatically to someone doing something to me. Um, so that's, you know, that's another way of looking at it. Um, some of it, I feel like it's self-acceptance. Like, you know, you, ha you are who you are and maybe give people fair warnings or just try to avoid situations that you know you're going to be dramatic um, in so that's pretty much it once again go to our blog I'm already 
picking my face, um, compulsiveness. Um, but yeah, go to our blog and um, leave a comment. Leave a comment here too if you'd like. But you would definitely be entered to win a essential oil once you leave a comment on our blog page. And that's it. My name is Tosh. Make sure you check out our page, perfectladycleaning.com. You are on our Instagram page at Aromatherapy Cleaning. I'm probably going to post this to YouTube. So make sure you leave a comment. Thank you and good night.